Greetings. My name's Julian Vane. I'm a writer and an occultist. I've been interested in magic for pretty much as long as I can remember. So for over 40 years I've been studying, researching and trying out all kinds of uh, esoteric approaches to understanding the limits of human experience and the capabilities of our imagination. So right from being a very young man, I was just interested in anything that was mysterious, anything that was on the, uh, the edges of what uh, was conventionally understood to be uh, true or real. So parapsychological phenomena, anomalous phenomena, dowsing, UFOs, monsters, um, and particularly magic, witchcraft. So the kind of supernatural powers uh, that in many cultures uh, humans are believed to be able to possess or manipulate or interact with in some way. From the time that I was a teenager, I had the opportunity to work with a number of other uh, magicians and occultists of various descriptions and to do group uh, magic. I'm the kind of person who really likes collaboration. And so if you look at the stuff that I've written over the years, many of the books that I've written have been written with other people. So I really like working in a kind of group setting. So from my teenage years, I was able to work in uh, a number of kind of eclectic witchcraft settings. So within groups that had their roots in Alexandrian Wicca, but were much more kind of experimental with regard to how they structure themselves, both in terms of initiation and also in terms of the way that rituals were built. From that time, I've been fortunate to work with uh, Druids, so people like the Order of Bards, Ovates and Druids, and with various Thelemic groups, including um, the Ordo Templi Orientis. And I've also had the opportunity to work in a lot of uh, shamanic settings, both modern uh, urban shamanism and also people who come from traditional uh, cultures uh, in the sense that they have hundred or thousands of years of lineage uh, behind their practice, which of course I don't have uh, because I find myself as someone interested in these things who's here in early 21st century uh, Britain and in common with most of the people interested in paganism, I'm having to kind of reconstruct, re-understand, redefine, reimagine a lot of the kind of the esoteric practices that uh, I see elsewhere in the in the globe. Over the course of the last fifteen or so years, something like this, I've become more and more uh, connected, I guess, in the um, imagination of many people with this idea of chaos magic. So chaos magic is a style of magic which was developed in Europe in the late 20th century and a style which is highly eclectic and which is really pivots around two um, critical ideas. The first is the idea of the paradigm, so the idea that the beliefs that we have about the world hugely affect and frame our experience of the world. So we can see many, many examples of this, but in context of chaos magic, it's a way to say it doesn't matter whether or not you approach magic through the lens of, say, Norse rune uh, symbolism or whether you approach it through Hindu iconography or whether you approach it through a very modern um, parapsychological or psychoanalytic uh, frame of reference. But your frame of reference will influence uh, and form and structure some of what goes on. So the paradigm really matters. That's the envelope in which practice happens. The second thing um, that Curse Magic is particularly interested in is the idea of gnosis, the idea of altered states of awareness. And that's really, I guess, where my research and my practice has gone over the course of um, definitely the last kind of 20 or so years, something like this. And this is bringing together my interest in magic with what I consider to be the magical substances. So psychoactive drugs and particularly the psychedelics. So things like peyote, ayahuasca, mushrooms, DMT, um, MDMA, LSD, all of those things. And how those experiences can be um, explored and how we can bring together some of the kind of ritual technology that, that I've been interested in for much longer than I've been engaged with the story of uh, 
the psychoactives, how we can bring these things together and create a variety of ways of holding, accelerating and deepening the psychedelic experience. So much of my practice now looks like a combination of uh, ongoing personal practice, which is things like yoga, meditation, that kind of stuff, group ritual practice, some of which is not psychedelic but uses techniques that get us into trance states, what chaos magicians would call gnosis, things like breath work, drumming, dancing, all the usual stuff, but also in settings where, of course, it's safe and legal to do so, using psychoactive substances in order to explore these occult realms of, uh, of imagination. Ahoy.